What's up, everybody? We got another installment. It's another installment. Guess which one this is? Trying to be a full-time day trader when you have a full-time job. This is the reason I created the Make More Trade Less Accelerator program because if you have a full-time job, trying to be a full-time trader is gonna be very difficult. So best case scenario is that you look at trading as a way to increase your revenue, not replace your revenue. Until you get into a position where you can actually begin to learn trading to the capacity that allows you to replace your uh, income, do not focus on becoming a full-time trader. And I'll tell you the psychological aspect of trying to become a full-time trader. As a full-time trader, that's your only source of income. So you will always feel like you need to trade and make decisions, even though they're bad decisions, because you have bills due. You have to pay your car note. You have to pay your insurance. You have to pay your mortgage or your rent. You have to provide for yourself, your family. Um, so what you need to focus on is trading less and making more. Trade less, make more, right? So dedicate a certain specific time throughout the day where you're going to trade and not spend all day looking at the chart. So let's hop in. All right. So this is the mistake. This mistake fully applies to day traders and partially applies to swing traders. Uh, trading is very difficult. All right. It takes 100% of your attention to be a successful day trader. The majority of the time, even though you're given 100%, you will still fail. However, many traders feel like they can be full-time day traders even though they have a nine-to-five job. This doesn't work. The market needs your full attention. Market sentiment can change at any second and a trader needs to be in front of their computer ready to react. You can't be in a meeting, on a sales call with a customer, on a conference call, or with the patient when you have a position on. Some traders feel like they can get around the demands of a nine to five job by having access to trading apps on their smartphone, along with price alerts that notify them of market conditions. This helps with swing traders, but not for day traders. A successful day trader would need to be in front of their computer monitoring the market for numerous reasons. One of that Watching the ebb and flow of the trading of a stock can alert you to changing conditions before price direction changes. For example, a skilled trader can feel when buying is drying up in an overbought stock. It might signal a shorting opportunity. Another reason is that during the trading day, numerous opportunities arise that weren't available at the beginning of the trading day. There's news, rumors, economic releases occur all day. A stock that wasn't even on your radar at the opening bell might be the most active and volatile stock for the day. So a successful day trader needs to be taking advantage of these events. So let's check out Scott. Scott was a full-time day trader that was a marginally profitable trader. He did well enough to make a decent living for himself. So when Scott got married and had a baby on the way, he realized the income he made from trading wasn't going to be enough. He got a job selling life and health insurance for a national agency, and Scott felt that since a lot of his time would be spent on the phone at a desk, he could still trade at the same time. He did no financial sales, so this wasn't an issue with his company's policies. So about a month into his new job, Scott was trading Twitter. He was short 3,000 shares and had a profit of 30 cents a share on the position. The stock was pretty active for the day, with no news out. Nothing out of the ordinary, but still was trading two times the normal volume. At 12.30 p.m., Scott was away from his desk for 10 minutes making copies. Twitter stock shot up $2 per share due to takeover rumors. The risk management software liquidated his position when the stock was up $1. Scott had 3,000 daily max loss 
and Scott immediately called in a panic. What the hell just happened? Obviously, after he saw the news, he knew. So what's the lesson? Scott couldn't have anticipated a big news item like this on the stock, but if he was sitting in front of his computer for the 10 minutes before the news came out, he would have observed the stock creeping up. Actually, a few minutes before the rumor came out, the stock went from down 20 cents to up 25 cents on the day. Funny how this happens. Being an active trader and one that never lets a profit turn into a loss, Scott would have covered his short if he was watching the stock as a full-time trader. So the summary behind all this, being a full-time trader demands your full attention during the trading day. It's difficult enough solely concentrating on the market, let alone adding the workload of another full-time job. So pick one, because trying to do both won't end for you well. Either you will consistently lose money, or you won't perform to your potential at your job because you won't be giving it a year all. If you don't think you can make enough money as a full-time day trader, then stop doing it. So this is why we don't focus on, because um, a lot of, I know my members and students, um, they have full-time jobs. Crane operators, um, contractors, uh, the list goes on busy professionals right so this is who I help I help busy professionals increase revenue through the stock market using stock options not replace revenue but increase revenue so if you focus on just increasing your revenue every month then you'll be fine you know don't try to pay your mortgage every other day don't try to pay your bills if you have a full-time job. Focus on, if you're making five to $6,000 a month, focus on making an extra $1,000 a month. Focus on making an extra fifteen, two thousand dollars $2,000 a month. Now you're going from six to seven to 8000 a month. Next month, you made an extra $4,000. Two months from now, you made an extra $8,000, and you're getting used to trading a certain way so by the end of the year if you're potentially making what's that 5 10 15 you know making fifty thousand dollars a year um, being a successful trader during the first hour of the day the last hour of the day during your lunch hour then you could potentially increase your income so that's why I say trade less make more don't spend the, all day staring at charts or on your phone all day um, trying to trade. It's good to review the charts and watch price action. But for the most part, don't try to do both. Pick a time throughout your day and make your trades. And with that, I'm out. Happy trading, you guys. And if you want more information, Make sure you go to www.privateprofitstrading.com. Join us in the Discord. The link is there on the front page. Join us in our Facebook group. Come hang out. Come ask questions. The more you give, the more you get. And that's just conversation-wise. I just want to help you guys put more money in your pocket and stop losing money in the stock market. If you need to book a call, go to the contact button at the top of the website. Schedule your 10 minute, 15 minute discovery call. Let's see how we can help you and what's your biggest challenge. And then put some more revenue on the back end so you guys can take an extra vacation, put some new rims on the ride, take your wife on a shopping spree, buy some new shoes. You know, it doesn't have to be hard, you guys. So let's just buckle down, let's focus on the strategy that works. Let's, let's generate and locate consistent trades. Let's keep our trade sizes consistent. Let's not try to go balls to the wall with money you can't afford to lose. Because if you can't afford to lose it, there's a good chance you will lose it. Because you're going to be panicking. You're going to be frightful. So, make sure that you are funded correctly before you put real money on the line. And you should be fine.